Hey everybody, I'm Jay and this is my wife Caitlin. Hi guys! <laughs> Alright, we're here to answer some of your questions. Um, you want to just start? Mm -hmm. um, so I asked Instagram, well you guys from Instagram, what you guys would like to know about us. And you guys had some pretty good questions. One of them we're going to save for a video for next time, maybe sometime later on this week. Um, just because we felt like it was like a pretty like meaty question to answer and we just didn't want to like skip over it. Um, so that's going to be a video all on its own. But we Yeah, did... that question is how to overcome challenges in marriage from a biblical perspective. So I put that one on hold. That's very serious to me that I just I don't want to just say like whatever. So we're going to put that one on hold. I think that that's just going to be a question that we really have to like pray over because it's something that we definitely take seriously in our marriage and um, there's just scripture that we want to share and testimonies and just really dive deep into that one because it's really important and there might be someone out there who really wants to know how to treat their marriage um, in, a, in a Christian you know way and it's just something we don't want to be like oh you just pray about it like there's a lot to it there's a lot that holds us together because we put Christ in the center of our relationship. We did get four pretty cute questions <laughs> that we want to answer tonight. And the first one is... How did we meet? And I love that question, Asma. I get, I get ready for that one. I'm like, yes! So, uh, we were both part of a youth ministry called Misfit. Um, at what was the time Christ Tabernacle, we still go to that church, you know, the Saints Church today. Mm -hmm. um, that was in 2016, so almost five years ago. Um, I was in a poetry group there, and I did a poem on stage. Um, was that the first time you saw me? <clears throat> okay, so it wasn't the first time she saw me. Uh, she had been looking at me for quite a while, but oh, yeah. uh, she noticed that it was the guy she was looking at on stage. Oh, I knew. I, I knew. As soon as I saw you, I was like... <laughs> we both saw each other. Um, so, I really liked her green hair at the time. So, we, we both knew each other from just seeing each other around. That was the day that we met. Mm -hmm. And... Like, we met, met that day. After that service, everyone went to the pizzeria to hang out, and I saw her there, and I introduced myself. Obviously, my answer is going to be a little bit more lengthy because I get excited about this question. Like he said, we met at what was called Christ Tab at the time of Christ Tabernacle. And we used to go every Friday night to this thing called Misfit. And um, I had seen him in August of 2016. I got the dates all up in there. And, ooh, it's August now, babe. That means six years ago. It was the first time you saw me. Oh, yeah. Basically, this guy right here, this this very gorgeous man, had long hair. Long hair. And I remember I was sitting on the... The church was set up differently. I know people from the church now might not know, but it was actually like a left and a right, not like a left and center and right. Like You know how it's like split into three? It used to be just like a left and a right. So I used to sit on the right side, and I remember he was on the right, but I was like far right. And I looked to my left, and he was like towards the middle area. And I saw you redoing your man bun. I had a man and bun. And the flick of that wrist while he was just putting that man bun up, I was like, ooh. And you had like, you were tan. You were like brown, brown. And I was like, this guy is gorgeous. And from that day, I became a creep. And for two months, I looked for him every single Friday night. And every, Jesus, forgive me. Every time I went to church, the thing on my mind was you. And I was like, I need to look for him. I need to like spot him in the church and then just stare at him a thousand times during service. Cause it was like, what, like two hours? So every Friday for two hours, <laughs> I was staring at him for two months. And um, there were a few Fridays you didn't show up. And I was but from that day on, I started like doing my makeup extra hard. I was still in school. So it was like after school, just like come home and like washing my face, get my makeup done, I'm doing my hair, picking like the nicest outfit. And he was known uh, to my friends and my family as the guy with the long hair because I had no idea what his name was I didn't I didn't know anything about you at all. I just she knew, knew my brother um, I Didn't know but she knew my brother. So that was our connect 
Yeah, I yeah I actually knew someone in school because we used to all go to Taco Bell after school. So it was what Yu Gi Oh, and I knew a guy at school and he knew his brother and then I got introduced to him in Taco Bell and um, no idea that that was your brother and so fast forward two months of me stalking this lovely man we went to service one night and we're just we're having a good time we're praying we're worshiping I'm looking for him and all of a sudden I see this beautiful man walk on stage and I'm like I looked at one of my old friends and I was like dude that's the guy with the long hair. He's on stage right now. And I started freaking out. I'm like, what the heck is he doing on stage? Like, what are you doing? And then he started reciting a poem that was beautiful. And I'm excited to say because of your cousin. Oh, I knew his cousin too from school. So like, I just like, we were just connected in a way. So I knew his cousin. Um, and a few months ago, he actually gave me the recording of the night he recited the poem at church that I did not know he had and I literally cried um, so I'm gonna insert that clip should I do it now? I'm gonna insert the clip right now to the worthless so misguided without purpose missing every chance to wait yeah. for a taste of what our worth is yeah. see I saw it all the rise, the fall the hurt, the pain, the gain, the shame the games we play is lost, I fell firsthand. Falling, failing, feeling caged. Built up anger, locked up rage, locked inside a fading haze. Feeling every piece of broken. Feeling every piece of broken. Disappearing without healing, eating nothing, helpless ways, is the way I drowned myself. But it's the way that I was saved. See, I'd cease to see the signs. And running out of time, I kept running out of line. We love pretending that we're fine, choosing water over wine. Wow. Wow. I was reaching, gasping, going numb, breathless, choking, saw the sun from the bottom of the sea where he reached and rescued me. Where once my words meant nothing. Now there's purpose in these verses that I spell into the night. On sleepless beds that once were hearses, praying, open for the light. Oh, the structure of my fate was constructed by the waves, pushing, pulling me, placing me everywhere that I should be. Heart awoken, mindset free, brought to my knees. And when I stumbled, raise high. These shaking hands, spare fertile faith of mine. And keep my eyes on you even when the tides rise. For I am a story, a standing testimony, a living, breathing purpose. He a lighthouse for the lonely. And I'll try hard not to complain about the pain, because I know how far it got me. Okay, so that night, as you guys just saw, was his performance that was recorded by his cousin, which I did not even know was there. Um, and after that night, I remember it was after service, I was trying to look for him to tell him that I liked his poem, but I couldn't find him because he disappeared too fast. Um, and there was this thing called Hangs after Misfit where everyone would meet up at what? It was either- Carrado's like, Pizza. That's yeah. where we met. At Corrado's, people used to do it at Taco Bell, which I used to stare at you at Taco Bell all the time. <laughs> I went to order, I wasn't even hungry one night, and I went to order food, literally so I could just pass you, like to go order and then come back to pass you again. I, I did a lot, okay y'all, like I really wanted to get this guy to notice me. Um, and I was obnoxious too, I used to get like really loud so you can like hear my voice, that's like so deep. But um, so yeah, we met at Corrado's because I had ended up telling his brother what was his name and I asked um, his friend to and they were like his name is Jonathan but he likes to be called Jay but you can also call him John and I was like how am I supposed to stalk him on Facebook if I got three whole names? So I had no idea where to look for him but we ended up going to Corrado's and what your brother had told you that there was a girl looking for you? Uh, how did that I go? I think it was Hunter. Our friend Hunter told me uh, 
he did one of those those uh yo my girl want to speak to you kind of thing <laughs> um i thought she was cute i i i was like okay and then i went up to you and shook your hand and there's more to she this thought story. that it was gonna end right there it could have ended right there no i thought it was gonna end because he shook my friend fabian's hand first he came up to the table that we were at which i freaked out he shook my friend Fabian's hand, and then someone distracted him, which was like Satan trying to take him away from me. And he walked away from the table, and I was like... And I looked at Fabian, and I was like, are you kidding me? He shook your hand, and he walked away. Someone interrupted. Like, I was this close, this close to saying hi to him. And then I thought it was done. I thought I lost my chance because I was just dumbfounded. I didn't know what to say. I didn't say hello. And then you walked back to my table. Okay, and then he shook my hand and then I damn near died. He shook my hand and then we introduced ourselves to each other and then when he walked away I told Fabian I would never ever wash this hand again. I went home, I told my mom that the guy with the long hair said hi to me and then I immediately went into FBI mode and I started searching all over Facebook and I went on Joe's Facebook and I looked up his last name, I went into his friends list and then I found you by searching all three names <laughs> until I got to you, which was a masterpiece in itself. And then a day later, you responded to me. You, you added me and then you respond, like you messaged me. And I remember I was cleaning up my room because I was living with my mom and I was cleaning my room. And when I saw that, like I got a notification, he messaged me, I literally like burst it out and I was like, mom! And I started freaking out and like jumping in my room trying to figure out what to say. And then that's where it started and it was beautiful. And then a week later, after just meeting, we started dating. Yeah, it moved fast. Uh, we were talking every day, every night on the phone. We did like this mushy thing where we wouldn't hang up sometimes. We just like have the phone on. Wasn't the one was like 27, like 28 hours on the phone? Yeah, I'd just be like, good night. And then like the phone was on speaker and then I'd fall asleep. Oh yeah. I got in trouble a lot from my mom. She was like, hang out that phone! And I was like, okay. And I would hide my phone under the bed and like, just keep it on. We used to like, be on the phone all day. Like, yeah, if any misfits are watching this, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, don't. It, we, we did, we ended up sadly like walking away from the church for a while, but we're back. But that's how we met. And I love telling that story. Cause like, it was the best. And I remember actually telling my mom Within about a week or two of knowing Jay, um, I told my friends soon, everyone thought I was crazy, but I actually told them that Jay was very different and something in my heart just really felt that. And I told them that that's the guy that I wanted to marry, that's the guy I wanted children with, and that's the guy I just really want to spend the rest of my life with, and that he was the one. And everybody's like, You've only known him for like two weeks. And I was like, Well, I feel. And uh, to all of y'all that doubted me, in my knowledge, in my brain, in my heart. Mira, right here. Ring, show the other one. Ring, like we're together, we made it. And we have two babies. Two. Story time behind picking the kids' names. Ah, oh, you wanna go that way? Yeah, uh, so I guess I'll start. Um, our first child is Everly. She's a fireball, she's amazing, she's a star. But she's also a fireball, so she's <laughs> a handful. Um, so I wanted the name ever because I felt like I liked the concept of ever, never, forever, all having the word ever in it, meaning this endless thing, which is how I felt about having my first child. And Caitlin wasn't too fond of it by itself, so we started like brainstorming. Long story short, um, Caitlin's middle name is Lee, Caitlin Lee, and so uh, Ever and Lee, we decided to put it together, and then Ever Lee was born. Mm -hmm. But he let me pick the middle name, so I chose Moon because I just I really do love the moon. Like I think it's one of the most beautiful things on Earth. Actually, it's not on Earth. <laughs> it's like. Literally in space. It was just really beautiful to me, so I was like, I really want that to be her name. And then it was Everly Moon Nieves. 
and then there was a middle name that I wanted. I wanted two middle names for her, and he was very like anti two middle names. What was it? I can't remember. Was that. it Everly Eliani Moon Nieves? Yeah, Eliani or Eliana. Everly Eliana Nieves. Not which Eliana. is nice. But Everly Moon, uh, our daughter has a very powerful name. Yeah. But yeah, I think it was. It was Everly Eliani Moon Nieves because I felt like it just like rolled off the tongue, but you were so anti two middle names. So. It was like a middle name is supposed to be a middle name. How are you gonna have two middle names? That is not a yeah, middle she name. Yeah, wanted two middle names. That's. I just felt like it was. Uh, early stages of figuring out how to do things together uh, in a relationship. Oh yeah. The original name that I had wanted for her was Kawelani because it's Hawaiian, and I just thought it was beautiful. But I don't. It's like it sounds like cow. So I didn't get my uh, Kawelani because apparently y'all just all think of cows, which it doesn't even say cow in the name, by the way. But I didn't think it sounded like a cow. I like the name Kailani, but I just didn't like it more than Everly. Well, she's cute, so it works. So every time I tell a doctor that uh, my son's name is Ether, they ask me why I named him after a chemical um, <laughs> that you put over somebody's mouth, apparently, <laughs> to knock them out. That is not what I had in mind when I named Ether. <laughs> when I named him Ether, I was thinking ethereal. Um, it's right here. So the definition of ethereal, or you can say ether, um, extremely delicate and light in a way that seems too perfect for this world. Ether is very strong. He's this strong boy who is just very brave and very strong, but he's just so kind. He's very lighthearted. He's very gentle. Of or relating to the regions beyond the earth. Celestial, heavenly, spiritual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a pretty powerful name. So it was something that I definitely agreed upon just because I felt like it was very like beautiful and very unique. And then his middle name is Jay because Jay's actual name is Jonathan, but his middle name is Jay. So we had discussed making Ether's middle name Grayson but something in my heart before giving birth wanted to kind of put Jay as the middle name because of how special he is to me and I just felt like it was important to kind of pass that name down so he thought it was going to be Grayson the entire time even after I gave birth but when I got the papers I actually had written a note like in my phone and gave it to him and basically told him that I decided that I wanted it to be Jay and um, I'm gonna put you on the spot he cried and um, he thanked me and then I signed the papers for you know the name like what to name our child after we gave birth at the hospital and that's how we got his middle name yep so my name is Jonathan mm -hmm. I go by Jay uh, Jay is a very significant name for me because it was a middle name given to me um, my my grandmother had like a foster child that she really loved. She wanted to adopt. It didn't work out, however, his parents came back. And so she was heartbroken about that. And when I was born, she was very happy. And so my mom and my grandma, I'm not sure who established what. I gotta ask my mom, actually. But they decided to give me the middle name Jay because that was the name of my grandmother's foster child. And so I go by my middle name. I really like my middle name. It's a cute one. I like it. It's, it's, it matches you. It looks good on you. <laughs> so next question is, what are the meanings behind our tattoos? You want to do like one tattoo and then you do one and then... Fair enough. Okay, so I guess we could start with the one we both have. So this is... Uh, this is a maple leaf. Um, I have had people ask me <laughs> if I was Canadian. I'm not Canadian. Um, <laughs> uh, so for our honeymoon, we went upstate Pennsylvania with Caitlin's cousin and her now fiance. And we had an amazing time. And we decided to get the fall leaf because Caitlin and I started dating in the fall 
we got married in the fall and when we had our honeymoon it was just fall everything like we love pumpkin spice we love sweater weather we love fall leaves all the colors that come out in the fall um, Halloween. just the cool air yeah and then it's like the start of all of the holidays so it's just our favorite season and so we got a fall leaf to uh, represent that and her cousin and fiance Crystal and Juju they got it too so we all have fall leaves mm -hmm. they got a different like what yeah they have like they have a different way. color variation yeah so theirs match mm -hmm. and then we have a different color variation so that ours match yeah and that falls into my tattoo over here which I'm gonna show which is this one it's a pinky promise and it has uh, my date from when me and Jay met October 21st 2016 that one obviously is in the fall so that this was my first tattoo actually um, and it's just a pinky promise to Jay and the kids that I'll always do my best to be a better woman and be a better mother and a wife and a friend and just like a woman or person like overall because I didn't have like the greatest past like growing up I just wasn't always like you know I didn't really always have like a good head on my shoulders and I feel that I, I failed my family and in some ways because of just me being a mess and I used to like have like anger and like, wasn't always nice with my words and the way I did things and after some fallouts um, I just decided that I wanted to be a better person for my family and I didn't want our children to kind of follow in the steps and like mistakes that I made so day in and day out my promise to them is that I'll always try to be a better version of myself and to like follow Christ always and to just always be a good example for our children but to also just always be a good person to you um, and I've really tried to do that like every single day and I promised him that I would do that till the day I died so it's a really really significant um, tattoo for not only me but I think for us as a couple so it's like kind of it's like really like it's out there on my arm like that's a promise to the kids and him and it's one of my favorite tattoos okay so I'm gonna show you my first tattoo over here so I got like a sugar skull lady um, I'm gonna I think it's called a Katrina Katrina so I got a, a Katrina lady it's a it's like a Mexican culture tattoo I am NOT Mexican <laughs> um, but I love Mexican culture I love Mexican food and reason being uh, a lot of my first jobs were in like the Tex-Mex kind of food industry where I learned how to make like lots of different tacos and other I, I used to make like horchata which is really good so I just really enjoy that culture and it's just from that part of my life where I was surrounded by it a lot and I really liked the design and that's that tattoo my oh I do have one <laughs> I was like, I only have one more. I actually have two more. Um, this was my... This was my second... Okay, this is my third tattoo, right? Mm -hmm. Is that in order? Yeah, this is my third tattoo. It's... I don't know how to pronounce the flower, which I know I'm going to get, like, poo-poo for. <laughs> how do you pronounce it? What's it called? And I'll tell you. Peony? Yeah, peony. Is it? Yeah. Um, I just really wanted a tattoo so it's not like a huge significant meaning to this one but when you do look up the meaning behind peony tattoos which you can look up for me as i explain i looked up the meaning behind it before i got the tattoo but i tend to always forget it <laughs> but it was like a really nice meaning and it was a flash tattoo and i was like oh i just really want like a big one because i just love tattoos um so i ended up just getting it done and it was one of the longest tattoos that i have uh gotten so it says, more than simply looking fabulous and standing the test of time, though the peony is also full of meaning. Generally symbolic of love, honor, happiness, wealth, romance, and beauty. The peony is traditionally given on special occasions as an expression of goodwill, best wishes, and joy. See? It's a really cute <laughs> It's very meaningful. I just, there's a lot to remember, I think, so I, can, I kind of tend to forget, like, the whole thing. But when I looked it up, it just 
it was something that like I liked a lot so then I went to get it it wasn't that painful actually my most painful tattoo I've... Ooh. I don't know if it's I don't know if the hands took over the wrist I think my hand tattoo actually was more painful than my wrist okay, I yes. thought the wrist was the worst one but then my friend uh, Diana told me that she felt bad for me and I was like why she was like hand tattoos really hurt and I was like and then as soon as that guy started, I literally started texting my friend. I was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I'm like, I'm in pain. It was like on the bone. And I was like, oof. But, um, yeah, this one was pretty long. I think it was almost three hours long. But it only kind of hurt like towards here. Like towards like my elbow. Um, but yeah, it's a really just it's a cute tattoo that I just wanted. Pretty bad. I <laughs> just like tattoos. Um, okay, my next tattoo is this owl with an hourglass and some skulls and there's a lady here show the lady <laughs> this is the lady it's a really bad tattoo um Can you do the flex no it's oh. a really bad it's a really bad tattoo that um i got when i was a lot younger everybody likes the owl part i just don't like the lady's face but i'm planning on getting that covered up and all of this fixed but it's just a symbol of like time and wisdom that was pretty short and simple i got it when i was young I just wanted tattoos and I don't even have as many tattoos as I wish I did. I will be working on that. Okay, and my last and final tattoo, sadly. I want more, but I don't. It's expensive, y'all. Um, are these four butterflies? So one, two, three, and then four. Um, if I'm correct, because you said you wanted this one. This is supposed to represent J. This is me, um, Everly, and then Ether. Ironically, I'm actually very terrified of butterflies. Like, really, really scared of butterflies. Like, to the point where we were in the Bronx Zoo a few weeks ago, and my mom really loves butterflies, so we went into like the whole butterfly area. She will run away and abandon the children. Oh yeah. And leave me in charge. Cause I trust you, thankfully. <laughs> but um, yeah, we were in the butterfly section. I literally started crying to all hell because they were getting too close to me and I was not pleased. And my fear <laughs> ironically started from that SpongeBob episode. So if y'all know about that episode, please drop a comment down below because that whole episode changed my life. When they zoomed into that butterfly and I saw how scary it really looked, I don't like it. I just, I can't stand it. But, I just got the butterflies because I do know that they have very special meaning and I guess like it stuck with me when my grandfather passed away in the beginning of 2016, um, right before I had met him. We had seen a yellow butterfly um, after my grandfather passed away and my cousin had like looked up the meaning and at the time it was very significant to me because it kind of meant like it was a like relative, like you know like checking in on you and kind of stuff like that. and. Um, we all just felt like kind of shocked by it and it kind of stuck with me so the significance of butterflies kind of stayed with me although I'm very terrified of them like very terrified it was just something really meaningful to me and I was like what's like the most important thing I could use to kind of represent my family and it was that so that's why I have four butterflies all right everything is segueing perfectly it's an insect I love insects um I hope to be covered in insect tattoos eventually and like mandala patterns are gonna be a lot of my tattoos in the future so this is my last one and I'm still working on it there's a mandala um, pattern that's gonna wrap around the bottom half of my arm and there's one that's gonna wrap around right here uh, coming out of this skull and that's a symbol of creativity um, and just open-mindedness and the centipede is actually a symbol of unity all these little parts working together to make this one creature function um, you can talk I'm gonna go show them my bug mug another reason he had gotten that tattoo I don't know if he was gonna mention it was he had wanted to create a <laughs> clothing brand and name it crawler and through the word crawler there was a centipede but you ended up ditching that this is my bug mug this is my favorite mug. This is my second bug mug because <laughs> the first one broke and I liked it so much that even before I knew it broke, Caitlin just bought me another one. So 
Please explain that it was not me. <laughs> yeah, it was my cousin Francis. I love you, Francis. <laughs> Don't touch my bug bug. But yeah, as soon as I saw that it broke, I didn't even like tell her. I was just like, I need to order this. So like, I went on Etsy and like I found it really fast and it shipped out. And then I was like, babe, I reordered the bug because like it just like shattered on top, like to the point where like you could probably cut your lip. So I was like, ooh. But I tried to be sweet about that. Those are some of my favorite creatures. I know a lot of people do not like bugs. I love bugs. Um, and Ether got it from me. Everly hates bugs like her mom. And Ether will pick up uh, all kinds of worms and little creatures from the floor. And I support it. There's no poisonous spiders to be worried about in our parts of the world. So we're good. It's disgusting. The other day we were at a park. And my son, Ether, decides, mm, worm on the floor. Let me just grab that boy. And he grabbed it and was like, mom, look. And, I was like, oh. and then I left as always, because I don't like that. And Jay was just super proud and like, yeah, bug. And then Everly's like hesitant. Like she was like in and out almost. And then like Ether tried like swinging her. And she was like, <laughs> and she like flew away. But I just, I don't do bugs. And you know, typically people kill spiders in their house and all these bugs and whatnot. We don't this man right here. here. Give me a cup. And then I gotta go get a cup. He's like, give me a lid. And then like, I get the lid and he, he goes, he does his thing. And I'm just standing like, you know, hiding everywhere. And he gets it, puts it in a cup. And then he just opens the window and he releases it. And all the time, like the spider like drops from like, it's like yeah, web Yeah, that's what thing. they do. They like, he just like, and then he just descends. And then you just see him like flying the wind and then we're like, oh, and then he's gone. And I hate it because I don't do bugs. The kids know that if they tell me that there's a bug, if it's too big, I'm not doing it. Like I always throw it to you. But if it's like tiny and it's like one of the like jumpy spiders, I'm like, mm, you know, and I kind of just like kill it because I get scared. You don't feel like they're disrespectful. Like they like are up in your space. They're comfortable. They're, they're, they're part of our, our great earth. Six feet. Bugs are not my thing. Too many legs, I don't get it. Especially a centipede. Okay, last but not least, why doesn't Jay send Bobby voice messages like I send Diana? This is all you. This is this is looking like a like a the beginning of a bromance. I love <laughs> I love you, Bobby. You are like I look up to you, you are an awesome guy. You guys are awesome. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll voice message you more. I do, okay, so the reason <laughs> I send Diana so many voice messages is because I have two kids. And if y'all don't know, I have a two-year-old who's about to turn three in September. And I have a four-year-old. I have released four, eat there's two. I don't have time to just be sitting here all cute, just like pressing all these letters, trying to get my messages together. Like I'm literally like in the midst of like running and like talking and like moving things around and like doing dishes. And literally, Diana's probably gotten a ton of voice messages where I'm just like straight like talking and all of a sudden I'm like, STOP THAT! And then I'm like, you know, I go right back into my like conversation. Like, it's just mom life. And because she's a mom, she gets it. So then it, we just both do it back and forth and it's just like really easy. You guys, I don't know. See, I don't, I, I just need to do better with texting uh, people in general. I don't even think my mom knows what I'm doing right now for the past like two weeks. <laughs> I, I just I just need to do better with texting people in general. Um, but I will be texting you. I share my love in like the form of memes. I will send memes. Uh, the amount of memes you send. And some voice messages because they were requested. Yeah. You send memes to every. He <laughs> won't give any context by the way. He'll just send you a straight meme. And like, that's all you'll get. There'll be no like text in between, like before or after, like it's just memes. And I'm just like, all right, I guess. Like no one knows how he's doing. Everyone actually from his family messages me. What is happening? <laughs> <laughs> is that the picture that had Nigel, you weak in Nigel tears? Squidward, yeah. <laughs> I was just crying one day, just like. <laughs> I forgot who showed it to me, but I was just crying. It was me! It was... I showed oh, it Oh, there's you. a mug! Uh-oh. That's about to be the new mug! Uh-oh. That's about to be the new mug! <laughs> He's like a meme guy, man. That's like... so funny. Uh-oh. I'm scared. We're about to have like a really ugly like mug in the house. But he's just- he's the guy- I ordered it. It's, it's, it's done. You ordered it? No, okay. 
Oh. <laughs> I was like, how do you do that so fast? I'm like, you didn't even put your name or address. I'm like, yo. <laughs> but, um, I think that is the end of the questions, right? We will definitely get to that, you know, overcoming challenges in a marriage, uh, in a biblical perspective, sometime this week or next week. We think that that's one that's going to be a little bit more serious and, um, like I said, it's like a very meaty question, so we want to like really like give it our all. Um, but yeah, we hope you guys enjoyed our lengthy answers to your questions. It's hilarious. Like I just told them, we really just put like about 40 minutes worth of like content into four questions. But I gotta like shorten this because I don't know how long y'all got to <laughs> be sitting here. I might tell you guys to get some popcorn and. Like, it's it's not gonna be as long as you think. We hope you guys enjoyed. We would love to do another Q and A um, sometime soon. I think it'll just be like a really good time taking videos together. <laughs> I'm getting ready to do the thing. <laughs> he is fiending for this outro, guys. Like he is so ready. So I'm gonna just shut it and I'm gonna let him take this outro in his hands. Goodbye. What is it? <laughs>